This is Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with Matt. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm in a bit of a funny mood. Matt can I'm a bit mobile. dehydrated. Tired. This Snapchat thing's taken over my life. Yeah, you're right on Snapchat. No, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a good Snapchat performer today. It's been a busy day, hasn't it? It's been a busy day. All waiting. Um, waiting, waiting. Well, Leeds didn't. I don't even know what to say. I don't think they knew what hit them. Berlin rather didn't know what uh, Leeds had hit them. I said, you know, I know that the, the standard promoter's line is we've got a new Ricky Hatton here. We really have. I mean, Josh Warrington's boxing eight round contest. He's brought about 500 fans out here with him. And we're going to do 10,000 for the April 11th event at the Leeds Arena. But they're absolutely mental, aren't they? We had a little fans meet today, we had a few beers. Um, but have you seen anything like it? I no. mean, <laughs> no. You've got what? some interesting footage to come out today. That'll be out later on yeah. from the, the bar we was in, pub, whatever. And also at the weigh in where they lifted Warrington up <laughs> well, before he'd weighed in. I said to him, Josh, do you want me to take you upstairs to a private room where you can just chill out? And he went, no, no, it's great. It was just like. I like to do that a few times. Don't know what it means. Um, do you speak to Paul after the fight? Uh, after the fight, after the Wayne rather? Yeah, he's all right. He's good. He's very focused. Wanted to go back and rehydrate. Made the weight pretty comfortably. Um, just what can I tell you? Um, rules meeting done. Got to wear his grants, which was a nice sort of psychological edge. Feels like he punches harder in them. Um, What's your gut feeling about tomorrow? I think he's going to do it. I really do. Sometimes you just get... I've seen it like... You know like with Barker when he first fight and then when you see him come back, just notice little things. Like they don't... You know, sometimes you can feel like a bit of a tourist. Do you know what I mean? You turn up for the week. Oh, I remember when Darren fought Martinez the first time. It's like we were out shopping Atlantic City and we are walking up and down the boardwalk. Going to Boardwalk, oh wow, this is House of Gattyville, oh wow. And then you, and all of a sudden the fight comes on. Brian Rose, when he fought on trial, exactly the same, well, New York, well. And then when Darren went the second time, it was pure business, you know? And that's how, how Paul's been this time. Just, no, no. I even said to him after Wayne, do you want to do a quick Skype? He went, no, I'm going to go back. My food, rehydrate, blah, blah. No, you know, no mistakes. So, so, it's a tough fight, isn't it? Um, but I think he's got an outstanding chance. And I, and I go back to the fact that, however you scored it last time, it was very close. And you've got to think that Paul is better prepared now and knows more than he did last time. I guess it, a lot of, you know, it also comes down to what desire Abraham's got. Um, did he prepare better this time than last time? I don't know. But I think Paul's got a great chance, got to make him work all night. What if um, Smith isn't victorious tomorrow night? Where does that leave him, in your opinion? It leaves him, really. I mean, it depends how he loses, doesn't it? You know, I think if he if it's another close fight and you know it's controversial, there's big fights out there for him in the division. If he was to lose conclusively, then, you know, he's got obviously the British title, which he still owes. He's had two fights at world level. You know, he's got his broadcasting stuff, but that's not even... Tomorrow night is all about winning, all about winning. And, and you never really look at, you know, I'm not looking at the alternative to Paul Smith who loses, it's all or nothing tomorrow night. Yeah, but that's from Joe and Paul's side of it. You as a promoter, surely you're no, ticking not, away not thinking... Some, sometimes with certain fighters, but with Paul, it's, it's like he's at that stage of his career. If he was to lose, he either fights in another big world level fight, he defends his British title, or he retires. Do you know why the board dropped that mandatory last week? No, I think that um, Robert Smith's over there, you can ask him. Yeah. But I think that, um, I wonder if you're doing an interview with him. Have you ever asked him? No, I haven't asked him. Before. Be great. I, I mean, he's got a lot of time for Robert Smith. He, he cares, and I think actually he'd give you a great interview, maybe later. Um, while they drop, I think they've just been waiting for so long, and I think they want Paul to make a decision after the fight. Probably not the greatest time in the world. Mm. Um, all right, we'll come back to this in a minute. You uh, 
had some news announced yesterday. Two bits of news. Two bits of news. First, that. Well, funny you should say that. One bit of pure news from us, and the other bit of news, a bit annoying, really. I mean, the IBF, basically what happens is when you go into a negotiation period between a mandatory and a champion, i.e., Yevgeny Gradovich and Lee Selby, you start a 30 day negotiation period. If you can't agree terms, you go to first bids. We, once you agree terms, you notify the IBF and then you have to send them a contract shortly after. So we agreed terms with Gradovich, deal's done, and then now the lawyers put the contracts together. We notified the IBF. The IBF decided to issue a press release and tell everyone. April 25th, London, you know, so it was sort of stole our thunder on that. And obviously now we're in a position where probably today it will be signed. But I don't like announcing fights till the signed. This ain't the first time this has happened, is it? I mean, it's not in terms just of what? In terms of an organisation announcing a fight before you do. Uh, it's happened before on a circular before. The EBU have done it. With, with yeah, the EBU is a bit. I mean, it's, it's not a world title fight, but it's. You know, I, I would have preferred that we got the opportunity to announce it ourselves. But yeah. so that's why I just put a tweet out yeah. saying, look, just to let everyone know the situation. Terms have been agreed, contracts are now being drawn up. Wait for an announcement next week. So that's kind of one fight that's secured, uh, more or less, on the 25th of April, Bill. Yeah. Where are we with Degal and Durrell? Still talking. Um, talks are going well. I don't think we're too far away from agreeing terms on that fight. But until it's uh, done, obviously we won't be announcing. Hopefully, we'll be in a position to announce most of the bill middle end of next week. The WBC have ordered Jorge Linares to make his defence of his WBC lightweight title against our very own Kevin Mitchell. Mm, let me news. just let me just ask you: Is it too optimistic for April 25th? Yeah, I think. Uh, listen, I'll, I'll do everything I can to try and make that fight for April 25th. I'm not sure it'll be possible, to be honest with you. Um, is it the money side of it? Yeah, mainly. Um, you know, I'm putting a card together that obviously we've got an idea of a budget for that card and I'd love to add that to, but it's kind of like to, to, for what we'd have to pay the Naris, I think it'd have to be a standalone fight, um, which is an option as well, by the way. What sort of time? May. Early, mid May. Back in the hotel? Or even outside, Upton Park, Leighton Orient. But if you could get three world title fights okay, on Google. one bill. I mean, look, I don't like to break the hearts of people like you, but sometimes, and maybe one of my big faults is that I'll give it to you real. Rather than saying, yeah, yeah, that will be amazing. I'm just telling you, it's very difficult to do. I'll do my best, but... But how amazing would that be? be totally amazing. Three 50-50 world title fights? be totally amazing. <laughs> and, and listen, we'll, we'll try. We will try. So, but listen. the amazing news is Kevin Mitchell has his final eliminator, which people didn't even think was a final eliminator. Won the silver title. Straight in. Can you answer me a question? That I'll do my very best to. It's confusing. We understand that different governing bodies work in different ways. Some are more. Um, adamant about the mandatories and etc etc with the WBC weren't Kevin Mitchell and George Groves in similar positions with the silver title that they had mm -hmm. is that correct? they're so both silver champions silver champions so they're both mandatory they're both number one right so what's the why why is Groves having to wait I don't know and Mitchell gets all the question for George Groves and his team but the WBC, is it one rule for one, one rule for no, another? I mean, don't forget as well, you've got a, a vacant title was contested between Linares and Prieto. Yeah. So they're due to face a mandatory straight after. But, listen, you know, there's, there's a lot of politics in boxing. Um, George Groves has been made to wait. It's not, I don't know why. Um, you know, it's a question for him. 
So just to clarify, Linares, it's impossible for him to apply for any sort of exception. We're already in the negotiation period and purse bids will be in 28 days. I would just like to add, for the last week, maybe 10 days, I've been in negotiations with Golden Boy for the fight. So I think it would have happened anyway. Yeah. But obviously this just gives me a little bit more leverage when you're negotiating and you say, um, they'll make you an offer and you turn it down. They say, okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go and have a voluntary and then we'll fight you in September. They can't do that now. So, sorry, I thought it was Gary Lockett. How confident of getting the Naras here? I wasn't that confident about getting um, Bradovich here or Durrell. It looks like they're both going to happen, so you never know. But what a massive shot in the arm for Mitchell to get it here. Kevin Mitchell will beat Jorge Linares. He'll stop him in or knock him out. Okay. I really, what? really, 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 really believe that. All right, well, we should await news of that. Ooh. Now, the fighter that held that previous title was Omar Figueroa, yes. who faces uh, Ricky Burns, mm. May 9th in Texas. On CBS. What do you say to people that just say you're chucking Ricky into the Lions? Two-weight world champion who's got an opportunity to have a massive fight on CBS. It's not, you're not chucking him in. He's, I think he, he can beat Figueroa. It's not, it's like... You know, I know that Ricky's off the back of a defeat. I know he had a win in Leeds, but to Zlatikan in. Ricky did actually pretty well against Crawford, when you look at what Crawford's doing to everybody else. Yeah. Um, I've not seen Ricky so happy and motivated about a fight. And he said, by his own advice, he said since the Roman Martinez fight, he's never felt like this. It's a dream come true for him. So, I mean, I don't know what you're supposed to do. You get a huge offer. Um, he's just he's so motivated for the fight win that on CBS and then back back it, in the mix has it been confirmed what weight they'll fight bit, it's under it's 140 is the max right. we made the fight originally at 138 and 138 was probably the perfect weight for Ricky eventually they come back and said it's got to be under 140 and we spoke, Ricky didn't want to lose a fight, he, didn't, he wasn't that concerned, tried to make it 139, it was a pound, I said no. But I mean, you know, Figueroa's probably going to come in at 139, 139. I think Ricky will come in at 138, 138 and a half. Talking pound, you know, pound and a half. And don't get me wrong, I'd rather it at 138, but the fight couldn't get made that way. Who approached you about the fight? Um, I think we had a conversation after the... Figueroa Estrada fight I've always said that Figueroa against Burns is a great fight and I tried to look at that fight when Ricky was world champion and then Al Heyman spoke to me about it about it was probably about he was originally going to fight Bartholomew and then the Figueroa fight come up Bartholomew was at 135 pounds um, Figueroa was at 138 originally and we just loved the figure out fight. Ricky loved that fight more than the bar. Bartholomew's quite tall and awkward. Burns against figure out is a brilliant fight. Brilliant fight. So I'm assuming Sky will manufacture a double header that night from Birmingham and then it's on to Texas. It's going to be interesting because that's, a, that's a, one of their earlier start fights in America. So I think they're looking at about 4.35 p.m. What? start for that fight. So which what? is like 10. I think it would be about 10, 10, 30. How's that about that? Do the main event in Birmingham around half nine, potentially. Or run a slight delay on the Burns fight by ten minutes or so. I don't know. Yeah. Got to work it out. But What's the time difference between... Six hours six in hours. Uh, Texas. Well, depending on the time of the year. Hmm. Where were you, Bruce? I'll be in Birmingham. My old man is going to uh, Texas. Right. He gets the gigs. He went, what are you doing that night? I went, well, I don't know. He said, I'll, I'll go to Texas. <laughs> All right. It's a great fight. Um, I keep seeing stories about Brooke Marquez. I don't know if they're old stories being recycled or Do not. You know what? This is a story. This is a situation with Brooke Marquez. I've wanted this fight for a long time. I spoke to Top Rank about it. 
probably two months ago. Might even be longer. And it was always, yeah, good fight, but, 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 but. Then when he came to the UK, there was a lot of talk about, oh, he's in talks with, there wasn't really any talks, we sat down. I had a little bit of lunch with him and his team, and I started to explain the money in that fight. And it just opened their ears. And now, since he's gone back, there's been interest in discussions. And you saw Bob Arum the other day say, that's a fight we might be interested in. He's got a bad knee, he wants to see if uh, he's okay to resume training, but love to mate, Brooke Marcus, love to. You know I mean? Everyone's waiting on Pacquiao Mayweather, which probably by the time this goes out, might even be announced. And when it does, it sort of frees up the division a little bit, do you know what I mean? Mm. You know, you've got Amir now, without a big fight, you've got Marquez, you've got, I quite like Rios as well, you know, I like Madonna. Kelbert will definitely fight in the summer, yes? Yes. In what month? June or July. Okay. I mean, we, you know, we've had some talks with um, Team Khan and I, th I, I believe the Brooke Khan fight will happen, but I just it's, it's, it's really difficult from a timing perspective. Because the only time it can, you know, we need to maximise the revenues, obviously, and that's got to be done outdoors in the stadium. So it's got to happen in the summer, obviously. Um, but we've offered the fight up beginning of June, but they weren't looking at fighting in America. And, but it's just, it's just, you know, I don't want to go on about it anymore because, like, yeah. but it's, it's the same, it's like George, you know. All this, yeah, it will definitely happen, it, but it can happen then. Yeah, but I'm going I'm to fight in May, and it, yeah, but you could earn three times as much fighting for the world title. I don't know. But, you know. Okay, my battery's clicking on. Oh, that old chestnut. No, it is, though, sir. Oh, I believe you, isn't it, Jake? So, um, could I go and catch up with Mr. Groves in a little while? That'd be interesting, give him my regards. I will. I'll, um. Just tell him to stop being horrible to me. Alright, I'll tell him. Very nice. Alright, Eddie Aaron, listen, thanks for talking to Eiffel TV. Uh, tomorrow night, O2 World. Berlin, Leeds is going to take over that for the first <laughs> couple of hours anyway and then it's great support, it's good listen, it's great to have another 400 out on top of Smigger's lot because it's going to give him that extra kick over the line. Absolutely, it's like Martin and Murray can pull off the... Yeah absolutely, good luck to Martin Murray as well. Eddie, thanks for talking to Eiffel TV. <laughs>